Yeah, first uh, conference meet, kind of exciting. Um, obviously, you got jitters and a little bit uh, nervous here and there to see how the kids uh, react and, and perform under pressure. Uh, good thing for us is that uh, whenever you get to a conference meet, it's no longer about invitationals and NCA mark. Our sport is so goofy. You know, you're chasing the NCA marks all year round to try to get to perform well at the NCA, and then you switch to the conference where how fast you run, how far you jump means nothing. It's just a matter how many points you score. So, trying to shift the focus from what we've told them all year is that that our number one goal is no longer to do well in the conference. Our number one goal is to do well in the NCA, and also do well in the conference. But but uh, one doesn't supersede this year will be the NCA. We, we want to really do well there. We want to um, contend for trophies and, and do things that, that really makes the university move forward. Um, with that, you don't want to go out there and lose the conference meet to Texas Tech either. So um, so the, the, the big question is, you know, do you beat Sam Worley to death at the conference meet and he goes to the NCA and come up with a big goose egg because he's so exhausted? You know, do you, do you, do you beat up on Kennedy Flannel and she doesn't survive because her body's just beat up and then all of a sudden you get to the NCA, you got a conference title, but all of a sudden you got, you know, 30th place at the NCA. So um, that's the stuff we got to balance back and forth as a coach, making the very best decisions for the student athlete, which I think is what this university uh, um, is really proud of, is that we want to do right by those ki kids. Uh, I don't want to ruin Sam Worley's potential professional career by uh, winning a conference title, but you know, we don't want to lose the conference title either. So. Uh, it's kind of a yin and yang. You, you know, some, sometimes you don't even know which side to go, but you know, we want to do right by the kids, and we also want to win. Because winning is important. Winning is what, what we're here for, and, and developing winners. And, and sometimes you might win and not even get the trophy, but, but that's kind of what we're after, just trying to do the very best by the student athlete and, and win championships and tell them that devoting themselves to a cause greater than themselves is also equally important. And then doing things for your teammates and making sacrifices is even more important. Um, and, and working together as a group is also very important. It's kind of the only sport that's like this, isn't it? Yeah, I think Two swimming, maybe swimming and swimming resemble us a little bit. Yeah. You know, we're, we're a team, but we're a bunch of individuals that we add all of our score together. Nobody passes the ball to anybody, but <laughs> everybody sort of have to come up with their part. Um, you know, it, Kennedy has to do her part, and, and freshman, um, I'm sure she got goosebumps. We've had a lot of, a lot, a lot of hours sitting in the office talking to her and, and, and kind of keeping her together. But yeah, we're just trying to balance it all um, and make sure the kids understand that the importance of, of winning the conference and, and also the bigger, greater picture winning the NCA. Are you feeling more confident about your manner your women at this point? I'd, I'd probably say vice versa. Um, I think there's some areas that um, our men uh, are not so strong in that, that we need to recruit and, and, and get some people to fill those gaps. And the women are a little bit more well-rounded and, and, and uh, we're so strong in some areas that, that we can come up with goo gogs of points which makes a huge difference. Um, yeah, I, I would say our women have a, a better chance uh, um, of being really successful in the conference and our men have a better chance of being really successful in the NCA. So, I'll have to sort of switch my hat back and forward. Uh, conference, uh, women will do really well, and men will do well too, but it's gonna be a real real battle with Texas Tech. And on the women's side, I, I think we should, uh, we have a really good chance to, to prevail there uh, when our men will come back to the NC and do really well. Uh, your, your women's distance uh, group has done really well. Um, you know, what do you think puts them over the top of, of everyone else? Um, I just think that, that one of the goals that I had uh, when I got here was that to hire a, a, a female coach uh, that could make our women really tough. Uh, you know, there's this, you know, we, we somehow, I don't know, I don't want to put them down, but, but try to handle the women differently. They're just athletes like everybody else, and they deserve the, the, the same respect and the same push. Uh, and I wanted a, a female athlete who was known for being tough and gritty, and, and that is super long this tough as they come. So, uh, and I think our women are, are significantly tougher. We're not completely there yet, but I, I think the process has started to develop these young women who, who, who are great, beautiful women, but they, they can get it done. They can compete at the highest level and, and they're not afraid to sort of get dirty in there and, and, and kind of go out and compete for championship. And that's the process that we're into with our women. And, and I'm really happy with the process. We got a big group coming in next year and then we'll continue on to try to get the, the the whole group to be like that. Coach, on the men's side, uh, Jonathan Jones, the freshman, just kind of burst onto the scene with that, the 400, I guess, at Texas Tech. What, um, 
what's allowed him, what has, what has caused him to be able to do what he's done right away, at least in that particular? Um, I'd probably say, yeah, like the Jamaican bobsled team, no worries, man. That that is absolute Jonathan. He has absolutely no worries. He told me that that his job is to show up and compete, and my job is to figure out the rest. He he doesn't put one millimeter of burden on himself that he doesn't need to. Uh, um, not the same for all of our kids. They have stresses. Uh, they're nervous about stuff. Uh, you know, Twitter, Instagram tells them good things about themselves, bad things, and then they internalize that, and that becomes a problem. Not Jonathan. He he doesn't give a hoot about what anybody has to say, but but what coach thinks, and so he competes completely freely. I mean, he gets to the line. He just does whatever I tell him to do, even if I tell him something that he might think that, man, I don't know if I could do that. When when we're talking about running 45 seconds, I told him I don't care who's in the lead. It needs to be you. So he said, well, what if the guy goes out in world record pace? I said, well, I guess you better figure that out. And he says, I will. So he did. He figured it out and got himself in the front and and, and won the race. He's just doesn't burden himself with the X and O's. He's just, I'm just going to do what my coach asked me to do. And I think that's why he competes so well. He just does not get bothered or flustered with the greater picture of NCAA champion as a freshman. That's a big thing. He didn't even think about that. He just takes it one race at a time. And that's really cool to see when a kid that young to just, and he tells me, I'm just having the time of my life here. I know it's early in his, in his career, at least here, here at UT, but um, did you see this, this type of, these type of results, this type of result? Uh, from him whenever you, you know, first got him here on campus and started working with him? Sure, yeah. He was uh, slated to be an 800-meter runner. Um, that's what he's sort of done and had the most success in. Um, did a little testing and realized that uh, potentially he could be better um, in the 400. Uh, number one, he was built sort of like a Kenyan distance runner. He was about 130 pounds and, and could barely survive workouts. And, and now he's probably about 25 pounds bigger, stronger, a lot of stuff in the weight room. So a kid is stronger and fitter. And he's really able to kind of get some stuff done faster. He was about a second and a half slower in the 200 than he is now. So his speed has increased, his strength levels have increased. And don't forget that because he's an 800-meter runner, he still has that huge endurance base where he can run for days. And, and I think that helps him in that second lap of the 400. Going up, talking about <coughs> obviously Kennedy's been really good freshman year too. Kind of same questions about her. Did you expect her to have a, much of an impact um, her freshman year she's had so far? Yeah, she sort of gave me the, the Kenny Harrison uh, answer. We talked in uh, October after we did some testing, and I called the super frosh because I told her that by the time we get done with March, everybody's going to know your name, and, and she told me, you're crazy. And that was sort of the same answer I got from, from Kendra Harrison. She told me, when I thought she was going to break the world record, she said, you're crazy. So I, I guess I get that a lot. But she, uh, she never sort of bought in that she could be this good. Um, and we've sort of had to really work with her a little bit on that because it's so sort of like a whirlwind. You know, people from home are calling us like, wow, you're the best in the country. Um, so we had a little bit of a slowdown because she sort of had to embrace it all and accept the fact that she is that good. Um, we're sort of backtracking a little bit now, kind of get that confidence back up. Um, but she's over it. Uh, last couple of worked out, she worked out with uh, Jenna Brandini, and, and it was. I had to slow them down because it was a battle. It, it started off as a nice workout. Before you know it, it was two women at war, and none of them was giving way. So it was really cool to watch her sort of embrace being competitive when an athlete that caliber, uh, you know, an Olympian, an athlete who was accomplished as much as Jenna, and she, she had no fear. Um, so it, it was good to see that confidence that she, she didn't mind going neck to neck with somebody that she knows is a legitimate you know, superstar. Did you, why did you see this in her that she didn't? What did you see in the testing? You well, you know, so for me, it's like um, well, somebody asked me somebody asked me that a few years ago. It's like, how did you know Kenny was going to break the world record? Um, sometimes you just know. I just watched the way she was moving. Um, you know, it's like uh, it's like people who watch uh, uh, horse racing. You know, you you watch uh, just the elegance, just the efficiently how the, how well the horse moves. It's like you can tell, you're not sure, but you can tell that, man, that, that horse has something that the other one doesn't have. Right. And just the way she was moving, she just made it look so easy. Um, and I actually, I referenced back with her is that if you looked at her picture of her um, at Clemson, the, her face had completely no emotion. It was completely calm. And you look at the picture of her face at Texas Tech, completely different. I mean, it was tension all over the place. And so with me, what I told is that, that 
at Clemson, you were nobody. Nobody knew who you were, and so you felt completely confident that here you are beating Lena Irby, who's, who's quintessential of the top female athlete in the country, mm -hmm. and didn't really know who she was and didn't really care. And now you have expectation. The whole world expects you to produce these world-class times, and now you're trying really hard to do that, as opposed to Jonathan, who's, you know, Mr. School Runnings, and he's thinking, I'm just having a ball. So. Um, it's just a little bit different than when you're dealing with, you know, athletes and their psyche and, and their thinking. And mom and dad, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, mom and dad at home, the pressure they put, best friend, uh, uh, boyfriend, contract, you know, uh, going pro, one and done, all this stuff is in their head. So uh, as a coach, it's not as easy as being just getting them fit and getting them to be world-class athletes anymore. You just have to navigate through all that. Parent, sometimes I call myself Dr. Phil. I feel like I'm a sports psychologist, but, you know, that's the part of the job that makes it keep you up late at night. Are you guys going in relatively healthy? To yeah, just a few dings and dings and dings there, but nothing huge. Um, you know, a couple of people, we're waiting uh, for our medical staff to figure that out. Uh, obviously, that's, that's their job, and we, we don't want to interfere with that, so we, we're putting it in their hands, and hopefully we'll get these kids back uh, healthy in time for conference, and, or at the very least, back in time for, for nationals. So we just keep my fingers crossed that things work out and let the process take place. What's your expectation of John Bird this spring? I wish I would have had two more weeks with him. Um, John is uh, absolutely fearless. Um, most of the hurdlers are afraid to hit the hurdles. Uh, John's broken about two hurdles already, and, and at this rate, I'm thinking I might need to buy more hurdles. Um, <laughs> but he, he goes through the hurdles like he's absolutely have no fear of them. Yeah. Uh, what I'm working with him is, yes, you can go through them, and because you're strong, they won't stop you. But sure, it'd be nice if it can be technically sound and <laughs> not hit them. Um, so he's, he's learning that hurdles is not just about brute force, but, but a little bit more about Efficiency. Uh, his hurdle of efficiency is not very good, but but he's uh, I call him the apt pupil. I mean he's what? apt pupil. I mean he listens. He watch film. He texts me about every film that I send him. We, after every session, I send him the film, and John has lots of questions. Why the lead leg does that? Why the trail leg does that? How do I make it better? So he's uh, yeah, very very inquisitive. Um, he wants to really be a really good hurdler. Um, I can sense that in him for sure. Um, but I like, I like his attitude. I like the way he hurdles. I like his, his fearlessness, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the things that's going to be cool for him is when he gets back to the football field, he will be significantly faster. We're working a lot on his speed and, and his stride and his running mechanics, um, try to get him a little bit more upright. And I think once he figures out, he's, he's going to be a pretty good sprinter uh, for us also. But, but his, uh, his fearlessness is going to make him a really good hurdler once we clean up his technique a little bit. And you get him back in the 200. Absolutely. Yeah, the 100 and the 200. I'm not sure the 200, his uh, speed endurance is not the best. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, like all football players, the cool thing about the football players, they, they, they know how to work. Um, he, that guy's a worker. Yeah. You know, he does not a workout he can't finish, and um, he will limp to the workout if he has to. And, and that's, that's good for the rest of our team to just watch that that guy has no fear and that he's not going to let the workout intimidate him. Well, not, not our entire team is like that, but John has a lot that he can teach us. Yeah, but any of the other people that did well at College Station, you know, Mark the Hughes, you got a personal record in the Pro Bowl? Yeah, um, you know, we have a lot of people who PR, and, and I think sometimes you could misconstrue that. You know, the, those uh, getting kids to improve is important, um, but unfortunately, you know, we're trying to get them to improve to a certain level where they can help us at the conference or at the NCA. So even though it's a PR, that PR might not reflect the potential it's going at the conference. Um, and that's what I, that sort of mandate the staff is. Everybody on this team has to get better. If not, then you're not really doing your job coaching. Whether they're A level, B level, C level, they all have to improve. And, and so far, we've sort of held true to that, that everybody's improving, everybody's getting better. Um, and some of them are getting better to be an NCAA top three scores. Some of them are getting conference top three scores, which is good. But not everybody's improvement is indicative of, of being a conference or NCAA score. Surprised at all that Kara wasn't approved to play this year, and how she been able to contribute. Um, I guess what the red shirt gave her. Yeah, she's uh, like a spark plug. Um, she has way too much energy. I mean, she's uh, coffee's probably not a good thing for her to ever have. She's just 
excited to be here. You know, the cool thing is that she really wanted to be at Texas um, forever um, and had committed to Texas way back when. So it's not like it's magical swish. This was always a dream school. She always wanted to be here. She always wanted to be uh, here in Austin. So when the opportunity came for her to be here, and for her it's just a matter of perfect marriage. Uh, she just wanted to uh, meet a coach and she wanted to train with Kenny. I think they've built a friendship over time. Um, so when the opportunity to come at Texas and, and, and be with a good hurdle group, uh, I think appealed to her. And, and, and secondly, for Tara, she wants to go professional. That's her passion. She wants to be at that realm at some point and felt that, that in her current condition, it wasn't going to lend itself to that. So she had to make some adjustment to be with a group that, that she felt could, could help elevate at that point. Um, secondly, yeah, not having her compete, yeah, for sure, that, that, that hurts when you got, you know, you got, imagine Sam Ellinger's not competing. <laughs> uh, that's not good for us. And so for us, she's sort of that level athlete. Um, but for me, not having her compete is good because now I can spend some time with her really working on her technique and, and improving her mechanically. Because, you know, if she was able to compete right now, I'd be getting her ready for conference where I have to bypass some of the bad things that she has, bad habits. Now I have a whole year, so we're really spending our time working on kind of developing her. Even in, in, in from my medical staff, getting her strong, getting her fit, and kind of improving some of the deficiencies she has. And, and I'm just working with ABCs of hurdling and, and jumping with her, which is really cool to sort of have that time as a coach. You know, sometimes as a coach, you just don't have the time because you got to get ready for the next game. Well, the next game is next year, so I have lots of time, and I can really be patient in implementing some, some differences in her technique that will actually pay huge dividends uh, later on. Is it rare in a sport like track? for an athlete to have to sit after a transfer? Is it a case-by-case -case thing, or is this a unique situation here? Yeah, I think it's best to go up to the coach. Um, actually, I, I had a, I don't know if you call it an epiphany, uh, an awakening. Uh, I think as a coach, I've always made decisions based on, you know, what you want the athlete to compete against you or not. But um, sitting out there with my wife, who is smarter than I am most of the time, um, <laughs> and she, she told me, um, I mean, don't you think it's hypocritical that a coach release athletes, uh, takes in athletes, but doesn't release athletes? <laughs> yeah, you know, honey, that, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and then I thought about it and I thought, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard. You know, because what happened is, you know, we take on athletes from other programs and we want them to compete right away. But in return, you don't let the athletes go. As a coach, I think that's hypocritical. So after that, I've decided and I talked to, uh, the big man CDC and say, you know what? I'm not going to hold athletes to go anywhere they want. As long as we take them, if they're not happy here at Texas, I don't know why anybody would, they can go wherever they want to. And I'm not going to hold an athlete from competing anywhere they want to. Because I think as a coach, when we're holding these young people, trying to mentor and teach them to be adults, make good decisions, I think as a coach, you've got to hold yourself accountable. So me at the University of Texas, athlete wants to leave here, best of luck to you. Here's a full release. Go wherever you want. Uh, because we do take athletes from other programs who are unhappy. So if they're not happy here, I'm going to let them go wherever they want. I'm not going to hold them back as long as we take athletes from other programs who are unhappy there and feel like they could be happy at Texas. Don't you think every sport should be that way? Either? I don't know. I, I think that's, I think every coach has their own decision to make. I yeah. think mine is a little bit more internal. I got to decide for myself that, you know, I got to be able to sleep comfortably. And, and I, yeah. that's one that I felt that that wasn't, um, that wasn't fair. You know, it was one that had a difficulty telling my current student athletes, like, Coach, why do we do that? And the wife asked me, asked me and, and, and I thought if an athlete asked me that, it'd be difficult to answer it. Yeah. Is that, you know, why, why would you let somebody else go? When you Because know, I, I would love for Tara to compete. And if I do that, then why would I let somebody else not go? So I just, I just think coaches have to look inside their soul and make that decision for themselves. But for me, it's just, it's good that we be transparent and that we could mentor and then teach these athletes to make good decisions as adults. And I think that's one piece to me that, that made sense that, that there had to be some consistency. Right. So maybe every other coach in married a smarter wife is yours, right? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not letting them borrow my wife. That, that <laughs> <laughs> so her, her, her wisdom stays with me. <laughs> and she shares it, so trust me. And, and yeah, I mean, she's, she's part of this whole deal, which is, yeah. which is cool. I mean, she's... Right. She's at practice, she's just around. She just you know, wants to help all the athletes in the team share her experience. Whether I agree or not, doesn't really matter. Um, but she's, she's there, and that's cool to have a partner that, that's also engulfed into being 
you know, with the program, with the team, and, and sold out to make sure that the, the kids benefit with the most they can. Are there any other football players on your team? No, it's just John right now. There were a couple that we had talked about, but they they were beaten up from the football season, and they need to take some time to kind of get healthy. But Who's you know, they? pardon me. Who are they? I think Duvernay we had the won the state meet. Um, yeah. There was another young man, a, a long jumper, who was also thinking about it. But but talking to Tom, he just felt that yeah. getting these guys healthier. Uh, ASAP, you know, it's like they go to track and they're still banged up and they come back to football, they're still banged up. That, that doesn't yeah. that doesn't land for a good proposition. So in, in talking to Tom, he thought that, hey, let me get these guys healthy. But yeah. but John is fully healthy, ready to go, and he's done well in track. Yeah. That just made sense. Um, and I, were, I was pleased to hear, you know, Tom saying that, that he wants to hear how, how fast all the kids are. Uh, he wants to ask them about running track. I think that's a good thing to, to be able to do both sports, any benefit. Recruits, any recruits that might? We're talking back and forth, trying to figure out some of the guys that, that Tom's looking at that, that might be able to help. Um, and, you know, obviously my job is going to be to get him fast and send him back to him because if I make him slower, he won't be sending him back to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is, is there anybody else we should keep an eye on this week? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, you got the regular, you got the, 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 the Kennedys. Um, the second Kennedy is, is, is on the upswing. Um, uh, John, uh, of course, you got Sam, you got Alex Rogers, man, that, that guy, I don't, I don't think there's a race he can't run. Um, you know, and the level of confidence is absolutely unbelievable. You know, sometimes it just believe, it just starts with, with their head, just having that confidence. Yeah. And he is so confident, whatever we put him in, he's, he's tearing it up. Um, you know, obviously you got Serenity and, 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 and you got uh, our long jumper, triple jumpers, I think a little bit of everything. Um, the cool thing is in the conference meet, people sort of jump outside their skin and do things because, you know, the team needs it to. And I'm kind of anxious to see who uh, on this team is sort of going to compete for their team. Um, and and cool thing is that they're very close as a team. And it's cool to see that, you know, they do things by themselves without me encouraging them to do it. Um, so I'm expecting that, that we're going to surprise some people to, by just putting on the, you know, like the, the famous uh, word, Texas fight, is it, going to be prevalent this weekend.